established in 1907 by chairman of the Providence School Committee, Dr. William Gleason. The Rhode Island School for the Feeble-Minded began as a modest farm colony in Exeter, Rhode Island. Modeled after the original feeble-minded school in Massachusetts, the Exeter School was created for the education and training of the mentally retarded, as well as so-called socially and morally delinquent individuals. While teaching basic academic skills, domestic sciences, and factory and farm work, the institution also served as a kind of foster home for disabled children and adolescents in state custody. Those admitted to the institution were usually youths, committed by their parents at the suggestion of a doctor, a school teacher, or, by order of a judge in juvenile court. Oftentimes, adolescents of relatively normal intelligence were admitted to the Exeter School for such reasons as a legitimate pregnancy, truancy from school, seizure disorders, physical handicaps, and other genetic defects. With increasingly inadequate funding and staffing, the Exeter School population grew dramatically for several decades resulting in severe overcrowding, creating dangerous and unsanitary living conditions. Even so, the institution continued to expand, evolving to serve an entirely different purpose than that for which it was originally established, acting instead for the long-term, or permanent, custodial care of the mentally retarded. Gradually losing sight of its function as an educational establishment, the Exeter School soon resembled a correctional institution, rather than an educational one, enforcing strict policies governing the detention, parole, and discharge of its residents, or inmates, as they were called. Outdated policies enforced for nearly half a century came under public scrutiny in the mid-1950s, amid allegations of rampant physical abuse and medical neglect at the institution. Following the Exeter School's first document of murder case in 1955, a highly publicized trial led to the forced retirement of Dr. Joseph Latt less than a year later. At 75 years old, Dr. Latt was not only Exeter School's first and founding superintendent, but, until this time at least, was also the institution's only licensed doctor, providing medical care for more than 900 residents. It wasn't long before Dr. Latt's successor, Dr. John Smith, came under suspicion of corruption. Under pressure from picket lines of disgruntled institution workers, and hearings held before state legislative bodies, Dr. Smith refused to resign, denying charges of misappropriating funds, and allowing neglect and abuse to continue under his administration. Meanwhile, the population at the Exeter School, now called the Lab Center, had grown to over 1,000 inmates, by the late 1960s. Finally, in 1977, a state-appointed commission of doctors discovered the appalling conditions at the Lat Center Dentistry Clinic, blowing the doors open on a decades-long legacy of physical abuse and medical negligence. The discovery resulted in a class action lawsuit, filed against the state of Rhode Island by an organization called the Lat School Parents Association. In the months to follow, Dr. Smith was fired from his position as superintendent, and the Lat Center was ordered by a federal judge to dramatically reduce its population to exceed no more than 335 residents by the following decade. By this time, several organizations had already begun to rise to the occasion of establishing a network of group homes for the relocation of Lat residents throughout the state of Rhode Island. As the Lat Center population dwindled, in 1986, Rhode Island Governor Edward Depreet once and for all announced the closing of the Lat School. During its final years, reports of negligence and abuse continued, until the closing of its doors forever, in 1994. During the 87 years of its operation, the Lat School was called home by more than 5,000 unfortunate souls, 